What is going on, everybody? It is Craig back with movie number 19, which is one that has been talked about a lot, and I was excited to finally see. You know, the strange thing with me is I, it's easier for me to watch a cheesy movie on Tubi than one that I think is supposed to be good, because I don't want to be let down. Now, was I let down with Great Night with the Devil? I wasn't. I mean, I, I wasn't. I, it had a lot of really good things in it. Um, I'm definitely not going to talk about it in the same esteem as some other people are talking about it. Like, you know, a modern day Marvel, this, that. The two of the names that were asked to write, you know, their opinions on it for the preview, I guess, um, was, or the trailer, was Kevin Smith and Stephen King. And I don't know, I love both of those guys. Um, I don't know either one of them. My, my sister actually knows both of them and has worked with them in the, in the past. But, neither here nor there. I, I enjoyed it for what it was. It, it was an atmospheric 70s show. Uh, there's a devil, kind of possession or demon possession involved in it. It was a really good slow build. And when it got to the end, it, you know, it, it you know, it's it's like in the Olympics, you know, they do the, the bars or the rings and it looks great, the moves amazing, and then they go to do the dismount and they ran down the rest. In my opinion, that is what happened here. You know, it's still worth definitely worth a watch. It's worth seeing, you know, it's probably even worth owning, but it's not it shouldn't be, in my opinion, put in one of those upper echelon. All the acting was really well done. It's not an actor's fault. You know, I think the guy who played Jack did a really good job in that role, especially when his dark secret came out, which, you know, that wasn't a dark secret. People saw that a million miles away once they started talking about it in the trees, but that's okay. Uh, I, one of my favorite characters, though, was Ian Bliss, who played um, the skeptic in the debunking of everything. But they did stuff with him that was just totally didn't make sense. He's accusing... The one of, oh, you just hypnotized everyone like I just did. See what I did? It's the same. But she did it because when he hypnotized them, he used hypnotic equipment that really didn't exist back then like that. But anyway. And like, so for him to still be shit gravitating. Oh no, it's, oh, it's not. Well, everyone's hypnotized. Now, I'm going to give you a little tidbit about the big guy. I think some of you know this, some of you don't. Um, I'm a college professor, but my area is psychology. And I have, in my graduate career, one of my graduate careers, I did take a class on integrating alternative therapeutic techniques. And one of them was hypnosis. So not only do I teach about hypnosis, when I teach about states of consciousness with my students, but I also was taught how to do it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not, you know, a hypnotist or hypnotherapist or anything, by any means. But we walked through the process and we did get a chance to try it out, etc. And... Hypnosis did not work that way, that mass hypnosis, that social phenomenon, which is the fake aspect, you know, where people kind of get tricked into thinking something is. But you can be tricked into thinking you're hypnotized, and then maybe you'll cluck like a chicken or something, but you can't be tricked into thinking you're seeing visual hallucinations, and everyone sees the exact same visual hallucination. Does not work that way. So that was a little bit of a, eh. But he was one of my favorite characters, even though when he started debunking stuff, he's thrown out options that are just, well, no, yeah, you know, no, yeah, you know, when the guy was spitting black bile flying from his body, oh, yeah, that's a, that's an old trick. <sighs> no, no, you can make yourself vomit, yeah, that's true, you can't make yourself projectile vomit black bile across the stage, um, and then collapse, I'm just saying, not the same thing, you know, so... The little, the little girl character, too, like, was I, I, Ingrid, her name's Lily, I think, like, she, she was fine, and I don't even know, in today's world, she's supposed to be 13, who knows, maybe she was older, maybe she was younger, but she was fine, but when she was not possessed, she still seemed very strange, so it's like as if she was seemingly possessed the whole time, and then, I won't ruin the ending, but they got into some special effects that they didn't need, especially since in the 70s, like, a lot of stuff that you thought you were seeing didn't have to be shown, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to give it a, a rating. It's better than a five. It doesn't just get the old five for me, like, uh, you know, which is the fallback to, yeah, it was fine, but I'll give it a five, seven, five, and I would have given it a hell of a lot more. I might agree with the seven and a half on, my, on IMDb if it ran the dismount, but it definitely did not. So 
go check it out. It's on Shutter. That's what I had to wait for to see it because I wasn't going to see it in the theaters. But I keep saying this, and I've only gotten, I think, one so far. I do appreciate the few of you watching these. I'm doing these for myself more than anything just so I keep track. But if there's a movie you want me to check out, a horror movie you want to check out, and it's watchable, you know, to be free... Um, Screenbox, Amazon Prime, Netflix. I do have a bunch of those. Two, I mean, I don't have, I don't have Apple, um, but I got Peacock, you know, Paramount Plus. So, if there's something that you think is worth watching, I'll definitely check out and give my feedback on it. But anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Till we meet again, peace.